welcome to RVing in the USA. I'm Bill Stevens, and this is going to be a very special 60-minute episode as we get you prepared for our RVing in the USA series coming soon. Later on in the show, we'll introduce you to my co-host, Maria Prekajis, who's out in Elkhart, Indiana. She's got something very special I think you're going to enjoy. But where are we today? We are in Bristol, Texas at this fabulous resort. It's the Range Vintage Trailer Resort. I'm going to show you around in just a little while. But first, a history lesson as we take you back to the very early days of RVing. The RV industry is as old as the automotive industry itself. Historians place its birth in the year 1910, just about seven years after the Ford Motor Company was established. That was the year the first motorized campers were made. These new campers found their place with Americans eager to find a new means of leisure travel. This culture of mobile tourists began to sprout in America in the 1920s. By the 1930s, RVs included beds, dining tables, water, and electricity. Progress continued into the 1950s and 60s, a time when many of today's manufacturers were founded. And that brings us here. I'm lucky enough to be with Daryl Sear, the president of the RVMH Hall of Fame. This is outstanding in here. It's one of a kind anywhere in the world. Before actual travel trailers and motorhomes themselves were the, uh, were the tent campers and uh, lots of people made them. It got them up off the ground. They slept in tents before <laughs> that. And then it just kept evolving from there. We have a number of one of the kind. This Tennessee Traveler is a, it's a one of a kind. It's, I, it's amazing that, I mean, people who now with their big RVs don't think that a covered wagon really started at all. So then we're getting into a lot of the hard shells. Right. The one on the uh, right here, a 1950 Fleetwood. Fleetwood at one time was the General Motors of the RV industry. They were out of California. And this is the very first unit that John Crane, the founder of it, built. And it's in the museum, it's all natural inside. I haven't redone anything, even though the upholstery is not real good, but I wanted people to see what it actually looked like. So this looks like an alien. This was, uh, uh, Hunt was a film producer, and this has been in a lot of magazines for years and years and years. If you look closer at it, you'll see windows that roll up and down like a car. It's just, it's one of a kind. So I want to take a little detour because I see some things, and you said famous people, and I'm always enamored with that. All right, let's take a tour here off to the right a little bit. Okay, this, okay. my favorite color is blue, so this might be my second favorite one. Well, by the time we're done, it may be your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> this is Mae West's house car. Now, Mae West was a very famous actress. She was performing in vaudeville, and Paramount Studios wanted to do films. And she said, no way, I'm not, I don't want to be out on the set, I don't want to be outdoors. They built this motorhome in 1931 for Mae West's dressing room out on the set, lured away from Paramount, I mean, they lured away from Vaudeville to Paramount Studios to do films. And this is all original. That is gorgeous. Yeah, you're right. I might have just gotten bumped to my favorite. <laughs> and to think, you know, she was standing her ground and then they had to build this gorgeous creation for her. If we walk on back towards the back, you'll see that, you know, how on the caboose on trains where they politicking it, they even made an area so she could come out and wave to the fans, but she wouldn't be touchable, so to speak. <laughs> Tell me, the Hall of Fame. Green jacket, pretty prestigious in another sport, but it's very prestigious here and very hard to get in. How does someone become a member of the Hall of Fame? First of all, you have to have 25 years in the industry in some segment of the industry. It, you could be in the financial segment, you could be a dealer, a distributor, a supplier, a manufacturer. You could be in any of those related, even a campground owner and, and so forth. Any of those segments that are related, but you need the 25 years. Okay, we've covered a lot, but there's still more. How about we head upstairs? Let's do. So all of these wonderful people, 1972, you started the Hall of Fame induction, but you did not have a museum yet. We did not have an actual building yet. All we had was the inductees and photographs, but no place to really, they were actually displayed in an individual's uh, garage who was a mobile home dealer. And so it was 1985 before we had the first building that was downtown Elkhart. This building was built in 2007. 
So, uh, and then we, we moved everything from the other building here and st started all over. So we start here in 72. Uh, when we went through the museum, I mentioned Wally Mayam Airstream. Mm -hmm. He was in the very first class. And we just saw Art DCO's parents that went to yeah. Jack Kennedy's ball, and there's Art DCO in the 75 class. These are all in order from 72 all the way to 2020 that you saw downstairs. See that down there, 2008? Yeah. That's the year after this was built. I was inducted into the I was thing. gonna say, I know that man. Yeah, and so I'm just giving back. And I, I couldn't be more proud or more happy to see this thing grow like it has and to continue to grow. It's amazing. I've been lucky enough to go to a lot of different Hall of Fames in a lot of different categories, and this one is top, top notch, so. Well, thank you. How old is RVing? Yeah, that's a Model T. And it's pulling this 1913 Earl Travel Trailer. Yes, 1913, that makes this well over 100 years old. And it's not that big. I mean, Maria's shoe closet is bigger than this. But it's got a couple of benches and a table in the middle and some storage, and that's the way people traveled. Oh, speaking of Maria, Earlier, she had a chance to talk to some of the local dignitaries here in Elkhart, Indiana. Compared to where I grew up, so it's been fantastic. RVing in the USA is presented by the National RV Training Academy and by RV Share. Find your perfect rental. And by Heartland RVs. Life, family adventure. Captioning provided by More Ride. Above, beyond, always. For more information, visit moreride.com or call 574-293-1581. Heartland has RVs to help everyone launch their life's journeys. All new designs and floor plans provide choices for every type of camper. Whether you're a solo RVer, a family, a retiree, or something in between, come find your perfect model. Because buying a Heartland should feel like you're joining our family. So let's hit the road and enjoy life's great adventures together. Is staying at home getting a little old? Try something new. Rent an RV from RV Share. Choose from a wide variety of RVs and camper vans that are expertly maintained, thoroughly sanitized, and ready to go. Book your RV today at RVShare.com. Having trouble planning a family trip this year? RV Share makes it easy and affordable to get your family to your chosen destination. Reserve online, pick it up, and off you go. Because it's time to hit the road. Book your RV today at RVShare.com. I'm with Terry Mark from the Elkhart County, Indiana, Convention and Visitors Bureau. We are downtown Elkhart, but there's more than just that in the county. Definitely, Maria. Elkhart County has three cities and four towns, which are all beautiful and have distinctive downtowns, and we're very proud of all of them. And Elkhart, of course, the county is the RV manufacturing capital of the U.S. I think I'm safe to say that. Why here? In the beginning, a lot of the uh, first uh, entrepreneurs and innovators in the RV industry uh, started their businesses here, uh, sometimes in, in their own garage, and uh, they found a, a kind of a critical mass of workers and innovators and entrepreneurs who uh, you know, built onto that uh, heritage and legacy. Well, in Elkhart, the whole county, it's known for a lot of Amish, and the Amish work in a lot of these factories. How does that all work? That's true. So uh, many of these uh, factories depend on uh, craftsmen, people who uh, build the cabinetry, build, uh, the, do the carpentry work that goes into an RV. So many of our Amish ride their bicycles to work at the local RV factories. So, you know, it's far different from why they first came to this area, which is for the farming. Many of them still farm, but also many of the Amish now work in RV factories. Why do people not only live here, but want to come and RV here? Well, I would say Elkhart County is really uh, a place where creativity, collaboration, and innovation come together, where uh, our heritage is of a community of makers. We have made things, whether it's furniture, 
cabinetry, uh, musical instruments, RVs, and so uh, we're very entrepreneurial and uh, we just get things done here. We, we believe in what we make. I'm fortunate enough to be with the two prominent members of Elkhart County and the city of Elkhart. Susie and Arvis, thanks for spending time with me today. Your smile says it all. You love this county. You love this town. Tell me what's your favorite thing about having these folks come in and bring their RVs and camping. So I've actually had the pleasure of having some family members use one of our RV campgrounds. So it's been kind of fun. I've gotten to visit them at the campground too. And the, the transformation over the last couple of years have been fantastic, especially last year when people weren't really out, right? And um, it's been nice to have them come and appreciate a lot of what we do, including our quilt gardens and some of our great little shops and the small businesses that we have here. It's just been fun to spend some time with them in and about and around some of the things that they don't get at home. Well, in Elkhart County City, late 1800s, it got established? Well, 1858, Pierre Moran, Native American, sold land to Havla Beersley, which is on Beersley Avenue, bought Havla Beersley's house, and he bought uh, the island down, and we call it Island Park. And supposedly, the island itself is, has the shape of an elk's heart, thus the name Elkhart. <laughs> and, and that's the story that I got, and that's what I'm sticking with. I mean, that's, that's the Havla Beersley story, so. You know, and if you ask people, they'll tell you pretty much the same thing. We are here at Moore Ride International, and Bill, I did not realize the scope of Moore Ride. It is immense, isn't it? It's yes. huge. This is just one of their buildings here in Elkhart, Indiana. And we're going to call in Jack Enfield. He's the director of sales and marketing for Moore Ride. And you know, we talk about how big your operation is. What exactly does Moore Ride make? Yeah, so we have five campuses, about a million square feet, and we do everything in the RV industry. We have suspension systems, which we're really known for, but we do things like steps and sliding trays and battery trays and, and toy hauler components and railings. But then we get into the Jeep market. We have a, a cool line of Jeep storage accessories. Then we get into fabrication in the military, the medical, the industrial, the truck world. So we're pretty much open to what customers need us to do. Our job is just to listen and then respond to that. We really want customers to be raving fans for us. So on the aftermarket side, when they come here for work, we really want to make it comfortable. So they'll come in, we'll have a comfortable lobby for them and just treat them the way we'd like to be treated. We'll have lunch for them every day. We'll have a, a well-stocked refrigerator and snacks and Wi-Fi and just let them be comfortable while they have the work done. This is really the start of it. So we take flat material and we're gonna cut it. And the way we're gonna cut it is we're gonna program it, we're gonna tell the machine exactly what to do. Now we still need a high quality individual to run the machine and to program it. But then once that happens, it's routine over and over and over. And that's how we build quality into every single part because we're gonna do the same thing over and over and over with much tighter tolerances. You can do all of these operations in one. If you watch that machine run, a part like this might take 10 or 15 seconds to cut rather than multiple setups for multiple features. When consumers want the independent suspension system, this is where we install it for them. So what he's doing is installing a space or two that will be the foundation for us to put the independent suspension system on. In our upcoming series, we'll be taking a more in-depth look at how Moride has become a product leader for the RV industry. But right now, stay tuned for more on RVing in the USA and my recent visit to Dillard, Georgia.
from the picturesque River Vista RV Resort in Dillard, Georgia. And we are here because this is where the Escapees RV Club has their RV boot camp. What is an RV boot camp? Well, it is what the name implies. This is where future RVers and veteran RVers get together to learn as much about the RVing lifestyle as they can. Doesn't matter how long you've been in this activity, you never stop learning. Let's go to our first classroom discussion. Well, this is Jim Kocha. He is the education director for Escapees RV Club, also in charge of Boot Camp and Smart Way. Jim, a lot of people with RVs, they don't consider the importance of the weight of their unit and how it's balanced. So talk a little bit about how that happens. Well, what happens is people tend to take more stuff than what they need. They keep loading up their RV and pretty soon they're overweight. Well, if they're overweight, that affects the tires because the air pressure in the tires is what carries the weight of the RV. And if they have it overloaded, they overload the tires, they can have a blowout and then have a disastrous accident. And that's, that's we don't want that. We want people to be safe on the, on the road. So how would somebody find out how much their unit weighs and how the weight is distributed? Well, the best thing to do is have the tires weighed individually, individual wheel weights. And what Escapees does, we have a program called Smart Way that will weigh the RV on the individual tires so that they can adjust the air pressure. Maybe they have too much air pressure in the front and that gives them a rough ride. They may be able to lower it down to have a smoother ride. But then the most important thing is they may have to add air pressure. And this is what we see most RVers have to have is more air pressure in their tires so they don't have the tire blow out. The worst thing you can do for a tire is overload it or have it underinflated. If it's underinflated, the heat builds up, then you have the problem of having a blowout, which we don't want you to do. And it's important to check that tire pressure frequently, I would imagine. That is correct. You'd like to check it before you go 15, 25 miles, before the tires heat up is what you want to do. What is great to have the tire pressure monitoring system that you can put on the tires that will allow you to know what the tire pressure is all the time. Plus, some of the new ones now have the temperature for you too. So you can monitor the tire pressure and the temperature at the same time. All good advice. And it's advice where you should really heed the warning. Our friends Phil and Stacy from the YouTube channel, You, Me, and the RV, recently came upon a serious incident involving that very subject. You can see behind us the red flashing lights and the remnants of a burnt SUV. We were just cruising up 95 North and we saw the Super C pull off to the side of the road and we saw smoke and then we saw somebody else pull off and as we got up closer, you could see it was really starting to smoke. So we pulled up, got over as fast as we could. We grabbed all three of our fire extinguishers and made a beeline down there. We were able to pull the pins out enough uh, so that they could get the, the tow bar out of the back of the hitch and he could pull the, uh, sorry, noise. He could pull his Dynamax Super C forward enough and he jerked it out of there. You know, we talked to him for a little bit, got him, he got his nerves calmed back down. Uh, he's got a sense of humor about All it. All of them do, thank goodness. Yeah, I don't know that I would have had, I'd have been as calm. I mean, there's really not much you can do. And uh, I asked him what he thinks it was, and he said um, they flagged him down so one of his tires was smoking. So, you know, we asked him if he if he had a TPMS, and he didn't. This just kind of, I guess it was meant to be today, that we yeah. pulled over and checked our TPMS for that very reason right there. That is a lesson learned. And speaking of lessons learned, Chad and Tara from Changing Lanes headed to Texas for some lessons with a leader in higher education. Thanks, Bill. We're here at the National RV Training Academy in Athens, Texas. We are about to kick off an awesome week of the RV Fundamentals course, and we're gonna go inside and check it out. Let's go. So the NRVTA, what the heck does that stand for? <laughs> it's the National RV Training Academy. And it's in Athens? This is an awesome building. They have this main room here, which was the place where I took the fundamentals course. They also have three additional full classrooms mm -hmm. in this building, and that's where they teach other classes at the same time, and they also, that's where we did our breakout labs during my class. Hey, RVing in the USA. Welcome to another Todd's Two Minute Tech Tips, brought to you by the National RV Training Academy, the only academy that gives you the credentials to become a certified tech and or certified inspector. Hey, let's talk about the proper way to transport your portable propane. Say that three times fast. So here you are, it's time for you to go ahead and fill up your propane because you're out and it went out about 2 a.m. It's typical. 
So you're kind of grumpy, you go ahead and throw the propane tank in the back of the truck, you take off to the actual place where you fill it up or exchange it. Here's the part that I want you to actually focus on, is when you're actually transporting that propane tank, you want it sitting up. Now propane, when we purchase it, we purchase it as a liquid, so it sits in the bottom of that tank. Up at the top, we have all of our safety devices. Now propane boils at negative 44 degrees, and we have all this outside ambient temperature raising that pressure up. If we were to lay that propane tank sideways, we actually cut away, we take away our safety devices. This is the worst way that we can transport that tank, is laying it sideways. We can actually freeze, yes, we can actually freeze up that service valve. And if it's hot temperatures out there, and especially if we're letting it lay down for an hour or two, we're having that pressure build up, we can have a sudden burst of that propane coming out. All we need is some type of combustion and well, things are a little bit different at that point. It all explodes. So when you're transporting your tank, make sure that you are transporting it straight up. Make sure you have it tied down as well. Do not lay it down sideways. Do not put it in the back of your truck. Do not put it in the back of your trunk. Now, just for you guys to understand this, you can actually put it in your back seat and strap it with your seat belt. That's actually legal. Roll down the windows, crack the back windows, and you're safe. Don't go off for two or three hours. Bring it back, put it in a safe location, and keep it stored straight up and down. Oh, just doing a little last minute cleanup on my Monaco Dynasty before heading out this weekend on another adventure. But we want to see your RV. Send us a clear picture of whatever you have. It could be a travel trailer, maybe a fifth wheel, or a motorhome, whatever. Make sure it's a clear picture and tell us a little bit about it. What kind it is, how long you've had it, where you've been with it. And if we use your picture on our show, we'll send you an official RVing and the USA hat. So use social media to get those pictures to us, and we'll share them with everyone. RVing in the USA is presented by the National RV Training Academy and by RV Share. Find your perfect rental. And by Heartland RVs. Life, family adventure. Welcome to Dish Outdoors, where HDTV travels with you. Take all your entertainment favorites wherever you roam with the Dish Outdoor Portable Satellite Antenna. No Wi-Fi or cell signal needed. It's perfect for RVing across the country, camping, and tailgating. Watch live news, sports, and your favorite shows wherever your adventures take you with no long-term contracts or credit checks. Plus, only Dish has pay-as-you-go programming. Just activate when you need your TV and you only pay for the months you use. Getting Dish outdoors is as easy as one, two, three. One, choose a Dish compatible satellite antenna. Two, add the Dish Wally receiver. And three, select a TV package and activate when you're ready. Once you have your equipment, activate your pay-as-you-go programming whenever you want and choose from a variety of packages with all of your favorites. You can even build your own package with the Flex Pack and get 50 plus common channels. Add on select channel packs based on your interests like a kids pack or a sports pack. If you have a wide audience to please, get more channels with a better value with our America's top packages, including more than 120 channels. Once your equipment is set up and turned on, simply call us to activate your pay-as-you-go service and you will be set for 30 days. If you want to keep your service, just pay for another month. If you no longer need your service, your service will be automatically turned off. If you are ready to take HDTV on an adventure, get started by giving us a call or visiting the website below, and our outdoor TV specialists are ready to assist you. This is Dish Outdoors. I'm here at my Monaco Dynasty to show you how it has a tag axle. A lot of Class A motorhomes do have these, and I can tell you from experience that it improves the ride quality and the stability on the highway. Now, if you're a first-time RV owner, maybe you haven't thought too much about the stability and the ride quality when you're headed down the road. Well, if that's the case, you need to watch this. Meet the Smith family. They just purchased their first Class A motorhome and are looking forward to taking an RV dream vacation. This is going to be awesome. 
Only problem is, this family's dream vacation is about to turn into a nightmare. A nightmare. Wait, huh? what? That's right there, Pilgrim. You ever taken this big old wagon out on the open road before? No, we bought this one because my wife loves the kitchen. But hey, how hard could driving this be? You ever ridden a wild horse in a rodeo before? No, but I've seen it on TV. Hmm. My point exactly, let me show you something. In order to have a comfortable ride on a horse, you need a few things like a saddle and horseshoes, which softens the ride. Reins with a bit, well that improves the steering of the horse. <laughs> Without aftermarket steering and suspension parts, a stock motorhome can be like a wild horse. It tends to sway and wander and can even buck going down the road from time to time. It's kind of like a stallion that's had too much feed. I guess that's why they call it feeling your oats. Withhold the oats. Got it. Anywho, it's going to be a little bit hard for you to enjoy driving this coach down the road with the death grip on the steering wheel. And let me tell you, buddy, white knuckle driving sucks the older you get. Wow, who knew? That is a problem. Hey, mister, who are you anyway? I'm the Coach Whisperer. Huh? I'm the Coach Whisperer. What? Yeehaw, I'm the Coach Whisperer. The spirit to explore the wild frontiers isn't much different than the pioneers who ventured west. Only difference is they drove a covered wagon pulled by a team of horses. Today, with the power of technology, we've moved those horses and put them underneath the coach. We call that a chassis. Most coaches on the road today are built in a two-step process. Step one, a manufacturer builds a chassis. That's the horse, and like a horse, they come in all different shapes and sizes. You got your Class A, you got your Class B, Class C. Many of those breeds run on gasoline, while others thrive on gobbling up diesel fuel. There's even one chassis called the workhorse. The second step is where those chassis are sent on over to the bodybuilder. These companies build a wide variety of boxes, and they put them on top of the chassis. With so many different styles out there, it's no wonder each coach is a surprise to drive. And I ain't talking about the good kind of surprise. Wow, I had no idea. Coach Whisper, could you help us tame our motorhome before we take it out on the open road? I thought you'd never ask. Yeah, let's take this big old bad boy out on the open road, see what kind of problems we can find, and then we'll take it over to my shop. I'll drive first. As the Coach Whisper, I have many years of experience at the wheel. This test measures how a coach will handle under emergency conditions. Please do not attempt what you're about to see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whoa, Nelly, let's see that in slow motion. This stock F53 leans dangerously at a 21 degree angle while driving 50 miles an hour. Now that's not a safe condition to find yourself in, especially if you had to make a sudden lane change. Are those wheels off the ground? Notice the slow recovery and sweat. Here you can see the coach leaning at 19 degrees even at a slow speed of 30 miles an hour. Erratic driving of the motorhome can be noticeable by other drivers. Fortunately, we had the support of local law enforcement. Gotta love our boys in blue. Whoa, that was a wild ride. Yeah. I used to have hair. That was before I started taming coaches. Let's tame this motorhome by putting some steering and suspension parts on it. Okay, folks, here we go. Now it's time to put this fully equipped Ford F53 through that same drive test. Ride them, cowboy. Notice how this coach snaps right back. Yeah. Wow, let's see that lane change in slow motion. Whoa, a real measurable difference, from 21 degrees all the way down to 10 degrees at that same 50 miles an hour, and a whopping 52% less body roll. There's not very much body lean when cornering anymore. That makes driving those back roads and navigating city traffic much more enjoyable. That's awesome, man. Wow, what a real difference a tame coach can make. All right, guys, enjoy your new tame coach. I'll drive, dear. Wait, what? Why? I drove as good as the coach whisperer. You didn't like my driving? Hello, RVers. This is Bill Stevens and my Monaco Dynasty on Route 95 North, heading to Old Orchard Beach in Maine. 
a few days of rest and relaxation wherever you are today. I hope you are going to enjoy your RVing adventure, and we'll be back with more RVing in the USA right after this. Another great location for RVers to visit is fabulous Las Vegas. You know, there's much more beyond the glitz and the glitter. So let's take a look at some of the more unique attractions. And as Elvis would say, thank you very much, little lady. formed so that we could retain Las Vegas history. So not only is it a history museum, but it's also an art, architecture, and advertising museum. We tell the stories of the signs as well as the people who designed them and what was going on in the world at the time it all happened. So you take a walk through Las Vegas history as well as world history when you come for a visit. This is where we start our story at 1905, the Golden Nugget sign. The sign isn't from 1905, but it represents the founding of Las Vegas. So we start the story of Las Vegas here when you come on a guided tour, and then we take you through um, what was happening in Las Vegas, how um, the businesses wanted bigger and bigger and bigger signs to draw you in because they had really ugly, squatty little buildings. So the signs became the big advertising draw for the people, especially from Route 66. The bigger the sign, the more people you had that come and stayed at your facility. So Benny Binion um, came from Texas. His casino really catered to people who wanted to spend a lot more money. He was one of the first casino owners to offer comps. He would give you a free room. He would send the limousine to pick you up in order to get you to stay at his hotel. So he really started that whole idea of, if you come and spend money here in my casino, I'm going to give you free things. This sign, uh, we left it in the yard, but we re replaced the light bulbs. So you'll notice we didn't redo any of the paint, but we didn't know where the sign came from. It looks just like the sign that was outside the Stardust, but what we finally found was it was a roadside sign coming into Las Vegas, and it was on a billboard to draw people to the Stardust. The Hard Rock Cafe closed, and Yesco owned the sign, and they asked if if we would like to have it, and we said absolutely. So um, they stored it for us, and we actually had it restored, and they moved it, I believe, in eight pieces up Las Vegas Boulevard into the yard, and it took three days to reassemble all of it, because as you'll see, it's 85 feet tall. So it's quite large, but we're very happy to have it in our collection. So you can see the Neon Museum in several different ways. You can take a guided tour where an interpreter will walk you through the stories of the signs and how everything came about. You can also come for general admission if you want to walk around on your own and take tons of photos. We encourage that. We also have a show called Brilliant where we project light onto the signs. They're not restored at all and it's set to music and it's unbelievable when you see it because you're going to swear those signs are restored. So here at the Mob Museum, it is our mission to help interpret the history of organized crime and law enforcement and its impact on American society. The Mob Museum opened in 2012, but the building that we are standing in is much older. It was originally constructed in 1933 as the federal courthouse and post office here in downtown Las Vegas. Oscar Goodman was definitely influenced in his idea for a mob museum because of his own personal history as well as the history of Las Vegas. Before he was the mayor of Las Vegas, he did make a name for himself here in town as a mob attorney. He worked on cases not just here in Las Vegas but across the country. He knew firsthand because of that how much the history of the mob and the involvement of the mob in our casinos downtown on the Strip really did shift and shape our community here.
We have four floors of exhibits, thousands of artifacts on display, and our experience really begins on the top floor. So you go up in our elevators, up to the third floor, and you learn about the birth of the mob, the early uh, social and economic conditions that sort of created street gangs that later morphed into these uh, organized mob groups in major cities across the United States. And you take that up uh, through Prohibition, which was the best thing that ever happened to organized crime. Learn about some of the rackets that uh, mobsters took over after Prohibition ended. Gambling, horse racing, even drugs, believe it or not, no matter what the movies tell you, there were definitely mobsters selling drugs. Then you head down to the second floor, which is where our courtroom is located. The majority of our second floor exhibits are all about Las Vegas, although we do still continue to uh, sort of string through that national story. You can see artifacts from early Las Vegas casinos, the Flamingo, the Desert Inn, as well as ones that are still around, like the Tropicana. On our first floor, it's more about modern organized crime. Um, most of the exhibits there cover from the 1960s to the present, uh, including our interactive hands-on crime lab experience and our firearm training simulator, where you can step in the shoes of our law enforcement agents and really experience what they experience behind the badge and uh, with their firearms. And then in our basement, probably our most fun area is a fully operational speakeasy. Uh, it is a full prohibition themed exhibit called The Underground. And there we house our distillery where our 60 gallon copper pot still makes moonshine right here on site. Uh, and then you can drink some of that moonshine as well as many other top shelf liquors in our speakeasy complete with the whole experience. There's peepholes and passwords and all of that. We have historic clothing from the 1920s on display in that area. We also have a fish tank modeled after the sinking of a tugboat called the Lizzie D during Prohibition. It was a rum running <laughs> tugboat. And there's really just so much to see in, in all four floors of our exhibits. The mob certainly liked the game. And we'll be back with more as we take a look at a gaming venue with horses. We'll be right back. RVing in the USA is presented by the National RV Training Academy and by RV Share. Find your perfect rental. And by Heartland RVs. Life, family adventure. Captioning provided by More Ride. Above. Beyond, always. For more information, visit moreride.com or call 574-293-1581. Heartland has RVs to help everyone launch their life's journeys. All new designs and floor plans provide choices for every type of camper. Whether you're a solo RVer, a family, a retiree, or something in between, come find your perfect model. Because buying a Heartland should feel like you're joining our family. So let's hit the road and enjoy life's great adventures together. Is staying at home getting a little old? Try something new. Rent an RV from RV Share. Choose from a wide variety of RVs and camper vans that are expertly maintained, thoroughly sanitized, and ready to go. Book your RV today at RVShare.com. Having trouble planning a family trip this year? RV Share makes it easy and affordable to get your family to your chosen destination. Reserve online, pick it up, and off you go. Because it's time to hit the road. Book your RV today at RVShare.com.
The neatest thing about the South Point is there's a lot of casinos on Las Vegas Boulevard. Those we call them destination properties. People from all over the world come to visit those properties. And then you have local casinos and they have certain amenities, bowling centers, movie theaters, bingo, inexpensive dining. We have the best of both worlds. So the local customers, they get that big hotel feel experience with all the different amenities, 11 restaurants. And then the destination people, they come here and they get the destination feel where we have a world-class spa, huge pool, 11 dining options. But then they also get the benefit of having a better offering from a local gambling standpoint. So it's just a beautiful hybrid that we've kind of built here. The other thing that we opened at this property when we opened is our arena and equestrian center. There's never been one hooked up to a hotel and casino. 4,600 seat main arena, two additional competition arenas, and then an outdoor practice and an indoor practice arena. We have a vet clinic on site, farriers area on site, a feed office on site, 1,200 climate control horse stalls, and you can participate in everything that I just described and never go outside. And then the other thing that makes us the most unique thing, we built a tournament bowling facility. Now there is one in Reno, but also not attached to a hotel and casino. So we partnered with the United States Bowling Congress. They do four tournaments per year. We met with them in 2010 and said, if you'll give us open and women for so many years, uh, we'll build you a tournament bowling facility. It worked out great. We had built a tournament bowling facility above our Prefort Pavilion. So we have two arena and equestrian center arenas downstairs, and then 60 lane of tournament bowling upstairs. Signed the deal with the United States Bowling Congress. In 2019, we did 52,500 bowlers. The tournament's five months long. Now, they don't stay the whole time. So about we get, you get three to 400 people come in a day, and three to 400 people leave a day, seven days a week for five straight months. So it's a wonderful flow, it's a wonderful demo for us. They're just great people, they really enjoy this property, a state-of-the-art facility when it comes to a bowling tournament facility. So those are the kind of the two things that probably set us apart, the, well the three things that set us apart the most. We are in Bristol, Texas at the Range Vintage Trail Resort, and this is Sarah Beauregard. She is the owner. This is a beautiful facility here in Bristol, Texas. We are already impressed and we just got here. Tell us how this all came about. It came out of traveling ourselves in our 1975 Airstream. We just adored it and loved being together and really loved like national parks, state parks, and loved privacy and space, but we also missed amenities that came along with finding parks that were more side by side. So we just built our dream park, actually. <laughs> we wrote down on paper everything that we love about all our favorite parks and put it into one. So what you were saying is national park, state park, wide open spaces, but if you want a hookup, then they have to kind of line you up cheek by jowl. Which makes sense, it, it makes complete sense, and most parks are older and have been already established, and with making a dream, we could start fresh from the very beginning and make choices that most parks can't make. Tell us what the vintage trailer reference means. Vintage trailers, we love vintage trailers. We think they have the most heart and soul. We adore them and love what they've seen and who's been in them and that they're getting a second life through us. Airstreams are so popular now, they're making such a great comeback with people, and that's one type of RV that you specialize in. Yes, we allow Airstreams of all make and model any year. We just adore Airstream, and we have an Airstream ourselves. It's so fun, it's like a rally every weekend, having all these Airstreams and vintage trailers together. It's just so fun. How many sites do you have and how do you categorize them? We have 22 sites total, over 30 acres. They're all 100 feet apart from each other. Most of them nestled into the trees in the back of the property. And they're for Airstreams any model, any year. Um, and then we have a select list of vintage trailers as well. And we have seven vintage trailers that people can rent in, stay like a hotel. <laughs> That's great. And uh, full hookups for people? Yes, all full hookups. Everything is buried, electric, septic, water. Um, so you have everything you can need with a large concrete pad. Well, it's a hot day here in Bristol, Texas, and that swimming pool <laughs> looks so inviting. What's the story about that? We always wanted to have a nice pool for our guests. Being in Texas, you want to cool off, and what a better way than jumping in a pool. Half of it is actually eight inches deep. It's made to sit in and relax and have a drink. What are some of the other amenities as points of interest here at the resort? 
Our 1959 Airstream bar is a full bar. We have all Texas liquors and beers and an assortment of wines. We have a wonderful executive chef that has come on board and he is going to expand our menu. Right now we have Saturday dinners. It's a Wagyu steak and we're having a bunch of new menu items for different days coming. What are some of the comments you get from people who come here? This is so unique. I'm sure they don't encounter this kind of campground everywhere. Well, we call them range repeaters. We have guests that over 100 guests actually that have been here more than two times. So within only being open for a year, that blows our mind and we're so grateful for them. You have a website. We do, it's The Range VTR, which stands for Vintage Trailer Resort. TheRangeVTR.com. And we can guarantee you, you will not find another RV resort like this one anywhere. The hour's over already. It was so entertaining and informative. Don't worry, there are more stories, features, outtakes, and more interviews on our YouTube channel. Go to RVing in the USA TV series. And we hope you'll join us again on RVing in the USA.